The group Ukrainian Freedom meets occasionally at the memorial for the Ukrainian national poet Tara Shevchenko. Ukrainian Freedom is one of many organizations Ukrainians have founded in Czech exile. They are students, workers or small business owners, and they call themselves patriots. They've brought along the Ukrainian flag to convey the message that their country deserves better than the regime of Viktor Yanukovych. <laughs> what bothers us, a lot bothers us. People who don't care about Ukraine are running the country. They aren't pursuing Ukraine's interests. They want to push the country back eastward, into the arms of the Russians. I try to do my part to get people to come together, be active and protest the government, including here in Prague. About 100,000 Ukrainians live in the Czech Republic. They are the largest foreign minority in the country, but they are inconspicuous. Most of them came here to work at jobs that the Czechs won't take. Many work in construction. As it happens, the street of the politically persecuted is the address of the office of the most prominent exiled Ukrainian, Alexander Timoshenko, the husband of the former Ukrainian prime minister. I was forced to leave Ukraine and seek political asylum here. The current government, the authoritarian regime of President Yanukovych, is persecuting me. I didn't want to provide him any additional means of putting pressure on my wife, who leads the opposition. And political asylum here is the only way to achieve that. Yulia Tymoshenko, the icon of the Orange Revolution in Ukraine, was twice prime minister before Yanukovych took power and put her on trial. At the end of December 2011, Yulia Tymoshenko was taken to Women's Prison 54, near the city of Kharkiv. She's in poor health, and a video showing her lying ill in bed set off a wave of international protest. Now it looks as if she's finally getting proper medical attention. The West condemns her imprisonment as politically motivated. They want to break Yulia, both morally and physically. Yanukovych knows only too well that when Yulia gets out of prison again, she'll be the next president of Ukraine. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has repeatedly criticized the prison sentences handed down for Timoshenko and other members of her government. Rather than go to prison, former economic minister Bogdan Danilishin fled, becoming the first to receive political asylum in Prague. His organization shares the office with Alexander Timoshenko. We're trying everything to ensure that Ukraine is not derailed from the path of European integration. Ukraine wants to be part of Europe, and the statements of the current government can't deter us. Alexander Timoshenko has registered his wife's party in the Czech Republic. But Danilishin doesn't want to be seen in the same picture with him, revealing that the opposition is not united. The exiled opposition is as fragmented as Ukraine itself. Maria Gavrulyuk is familiar with the problem. Every day she guides Ukrainian tourists through Prague. This is just one of the several jobs she holds. A typical fate for an exile. I want to give young people the chance to experience Europe. I want an agreement to be signed that allows young people to come here to the European Union, at least to study. Maria says change is palpable in Ukraine, but it's coming painfully slowly. She says she wants to do what she can to help from here in Prague. But journalist Natalie Khurikova says the idea of leading the opposition from abroad is unrealistic. She says the only way to gain political influence in Ukraine is to be in the country. She says many are here for economic reasons. Prague was, in that sense, was a natural place for the for the ministers or for the opposition to come to. But that said, they also have the businesses here. There are business interests here. And Mr. Timoshenko, the husband of uh, former Prime Minister Yulia Timoshenko, he also has business here. 
Alexander Timoshenko neither talks about business nor his work in the opposition. Instead, he calls on the European Union to act. The EU should stop listening to Yanukovych. This has been going on for more than a year. Either they should protect the opposition as they do in Belarus, or they're on the side of the regime that is flirting with them. The Ukrainians in exile dream of returning to a free, democratic Ukraine that offers opportunity for all. They say Ukraine is a rich country and has wasted too many years. But that could also apply to the Timoshenko government. That, however, is something that's left unsaid.